are playing Bridge Barcata right now underneath the Coronado Bridge at the beginning of it in Chicano Park. What we have behind us, we have our Bridge Barcada pickup. Anyone can come, so just random people. We don't have set teams, so it's just whoever gets here, we give them a bib, they join a team, and that's how we start. We have uh, seven minute games. And so that's what's going on behind here. Bridge Barcada came up because we had a bunch of people from all different organizations from EPL supporter groups, from the American Outlaws, from all different soccer organizations. Why not get together and play? I knew of the spot down in Mission Valley, the original bridge. It used to just to be a DIY skate park. I thought, I know it got torn down a few years back. It's got walls, you know, it's a flat surface concrete. Let's go see what's going on. So I uh, went down there and just started cleaning it and just made it our own. So that's pretty much how it happened, just out of just necessity and desire. But at some point, it kind of just became not really so feasible to be there. We had to jump fences to get there, and um, we kind of had to clean it up every week. And then when it started raining here, it uh, flooded really, really badly to the point that we couldn't really do anything with it. We couldn't have lights there, so when the time changed, it, it really got too dark for us to play. Um, and Chicano Park has lights. Um, from what we could see, not really anybody uses these basketball courts in the afternoon. So um, we just started showing up here, and I, it's only been about two and a half months now. And it grew from being six or eight people per session to now being 30 plus every session. Brandon kind of came out of the necessity to, to name it. And Carl talked to his wife and came out with a, I believe it's a Filipino word, barcada. Barcada is like a Filipino word for community, uh, crew, kind of a gang too, but more of a community. And at first we wanted to do like a freeway sign because we literally played under the, I think the 15. So it's like, that makes sense, let's make the crest. San Diego County sign, which represents all 18 uh, cities in San Diego County. And we were established 2018, so that kind of worked out. Everybody kind of jumped on the, the Facebook message board and started giving their inputs and saying what they liked and what they didn't like. We, we liked the, the black with the bright colors, so um, we, we got to that point. And we kind of made it in kind of like a graffiti because where we played, um, there's tons of graffiti on the wall and also represents uh, the creativity of um, our street culture. So it's, it's creativity on the court, creativity on our shirt, uh, again, San Diego uh, on, our, on our chest. I think of it as bridge, as bridging the community together, uh, Barcada, uh, bringing our community together and our family together. So I mean, that's kind of how Bridge Barcada came to be. Uh, we're at the original bridge location where we all started this whole thing. It's a 10 lane wide road directly above us. Which is under I-15 uh, next to the Qualcomm or the old Qualcomm Stadium. It's SDCCU Stadium now. Uh, we're here just because we kind of wanted to just come back to the original spot. We're pushing, coming up on the year, so I checked on it the other day. It still looked clean, so we said, let's, let's go back. And I kind of expected it to be a lot uh, more destroyed from all the rain that we've had over the last six months. Because um, that was part of the reason why we left in the first place was because the area flooded so badly the first time we got a really heavy rain down here. 
that we couldn't even get into this area, let alone get in here and try and play. So I, I expected there to be three or four inches worth of dried mud on the ground like there was when we first got here, but it's pretty much exactly the same as it was when we left it. Um, and I was kind of remarking walking on the other side of where we play, where we stopped playing, we never really touched that area. And I walked back there and it was like a whole new treasure trove of just stuff that had washed in there, stuff that people had brought in there. Um, but yet this area was still relatively clear. Physically to get here, it's much more difficult than Chicano Park where you just walk up and it's a publicly accessible basketball court off the street. Here you actually have to park a little bit down the way because you can't really park in the stadium parking lot. There's only limited street parking. You have to walk under the bridge. Jump a fence to get here. Squeeze through a fence. And then come in through another fence to actually get into this site. Which I've caught myself on multiple times. Um, so yeah, it's not the easiest place to get to, but um, we all think it's, it's worth the trek in here. Uh, well, it was with like a group of friends. We were like doing a DM in Twitter just over just soccer stuff that's happening in the community. The soccer city stuff was happening, but that really sparked up the soccer community in general. So we were just conversing in a DM about soccer, and uh, we were just like, I just want to play. I wish it had like that skate culture feel. You know, rather than going to a, like a nice grassy field where it's like 100 yards and you need, you know, 11 a side. We, I was like, let's do somewhere small sided. You don't have to pay. It's just pure fun. You know, exactly what I would get when I grew up skateboarding. You go to the park, your friends are already there. And so I knew this spot was here because it used to be a skate park, a DIY skate park. And then it was torn down. And so I just always remember this spot. And it's like, well, where can we build it? And other people have been trying in different parks around the city, having no luck. And so we just came here. I told a couple friends, like, hey, let's go check it out. And I showed them pictures of it. It was completely filthy. But I said, this could be a great spot. It's got walls, it's got a fence to catch the ball so you're not chasing it, it's small. Uh, so it wouldn't take a lot of people to have a good game. It was different. The first game here was mostly just sweeping, not a lot of playing. Uh, you know, there's just debris that gets cut running from the river. Dry dirt, mud. We run into everything from just your general everyday trash to clothing. Leftover tires, broken glass, used up spray paint cans, rebar that's left over from when it was a skate park, cinder blocks, broken fences. There were parking blocks that were still there because this apparently used to be an overflow parking lot for the stadium. And so we just started sweeping, just pushing the dirt back. And it was just like an incremental thing on a week by week basis. We just got one more little thing done and we all kind of conversed throughout the week and talked about what we were going to work on, what we were going to change about it the next week. After, I don't know, probably a month, we finally had enough space cleared out to play, and then we just slowly pushed more and more and more, and now we got the full-size court here. It's just, uh, it's a little gritty, dirty, uh, but it's, it's where we are. It changed a little bit once we finally swept it out a, a bit and started getting more people. Um, the first, first game, though, was so just like, just a few of us, there's only two or three of us, I think, maybe four of us, to where we could all actually, you know, just kick around a little bit and um, have a little bit of a game, but it wasn't really, you know, it was more just kind of like seeing the vision, seeing the future of just, hey, having a place we, and a space where we can go play um, was kind of the key at first, and then as we started to create that space, the play started to get better and better and until we are here. Well, when we first came out here, I had made these little goals that just leaned against the wall. They were like a three by four, just just four screws holding it together, leaned it up against the wall. They got broken. So we're like, well, we need just permanent goals. Plus that way, you know, if somebody wants to come and play without us here, they can play, which is the other barrier that we face in other pickup games is if the goals aren't there, nobody plays. So uh, I got some uh, pressure treated wood so it could last through the weather and put it into the ground. I mean, everything we've done, we were kind of joking as we were putting up nets that you can see in here um, because we had that netting for months and we're using it just to keep the ball so that it wouldn't go fly way out of play when we lost it on one end. Um, and then we decided we were going to staple it to the back of the goals today and we kind of went, why didn't we do this from the get-go? This would have saved us a lot of pain. 
Well, playing hazards, there's the cinder blocks are the big thing because if you're running alongside one of the walls, sometimes you forget that they're there. And there's rebar sticking up, but we put cones over it, which is the best that we can do. We try and just keep away from all the stuff that we know of that's out here. But it's kind of, it's just a little bit of character. It just feels a little bit more like it's a street rather than, you know, like a basketball court or anything like that. It always felt like our place from kind of the moment we started playing here. And the more we improved it on a week by week basis, it just felt more and more like our place. You know, just like being a kid again, just kind of like going and creating your own playground and playing like you were a kid and really forgetting about the rest of the week, uh, but just enjoying yourself and enjoying, uh, you know, kind of building community with a few other people. Uh, it's a good memory. It feels like there's like a, it's like, feels like there's energy there. I don't know if it's my own like memories putting that energy there or if it really is, but when you come in, it just feels like, oh, this is where it began. So, I mean, it really like pulled the community together, at least it solidified it for me with, a, with some really close friends. So, I mean, it just, it feels like a coming home. Still a little gritty, but it, it feels, it's fun to be here again. Yeah. I mean, if you pull up here, there's a driveway that's just on the other side of the fence here complete open area that could be a parking lot. I mean, there's multiple areas here just along underneath the bridge that could be multiple courts. I would love that. That would be a dream, actually, if this became just a soccer park, that every spot was a court, people could play, park safely. I mean, that would be amazing. I mean, I know there's great leagues that you could sign up and play for, and but you have to pay. But I just, for how much fun I'm having with pickup with friends, I, I can't imagine, like, paying to play again, really, to be honest, because I have more fun, people aren't getting hurt, you know, like because it's in light heart, you know, we're here to have a good time. We're not trying to win or get in first place or anything like that, so yeah, just play for free, always. I think we, I've always seen like there could be a bigger vision to this and that this, this is something that the city needs and to, in order to embrace the bigger sport of soccer overall, I think is that more free to play access and more just upfront access to playing the sport. Um, for skill sets to grow, for people to really appreciate certain things about the game. So overall, I think I've always seen that this idea as something that could be big, but this specifically always just felt like it was kind of a few guys hanging out under over and under an overpass just playing soccer because um, we love playing. It wasn't so much like, oh, it's going to grow into something. It was just, hey, we love playing, and it's amazing how many other people love just to play for free and show up and hang out. I believe Paul's been able to sell enough shirts and jerseys to be able to kind of upgrade our our games here in the sense that we're, we're able to have like full colored pennies and it's a little bit more organized and yeah, it's been it's been really good. We're just really building the street soccer community here in San Diego, which hasn't really been a thing. So it's awesome to see it grow. First time I saw it was uh, online, saw their first post, and then I was like, gotta go check this out. Came down here, um, brought my kid, first time, yeah. Liked the culture. You never played with the same person, you always play with someone different. Um, there's no one winning first place, so that's the fun about it, you know? Don't worry about it. if you're gonna lose, win. Just hide here, play, have fun. I think it's grown a lot. I mean, I've only been playing since it's been in Chicano Park, but more and more people come out each week, and the games are great. Everyone's really fun to play with. It's good competition, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, the soccer culture makes friends and makes, yeah, makes so really social, good social life. We have people from all different groups, all different walks of life, from all over the county, just come together and just enjoy the sport. We established ourselves at Chicano Park, and then that's when it kind of blew up because we no longer had to climb a fence. It was hidden, it was open to the public, anyone could come. And then just a lot more people came and just joined. Again, just to, it's a pickup game, anyone can play, and it was just fun. And then from there, we kind of um, moved on to what else can we do? Because we're here, it's fun playing at Chicano Park, but we kind of also want to get back to our roots of playing in, in unique places. And I think this is kind of how the pop-up kind of evolved. So our first one was at Peco Park. And then we've also had Balboa Park. It's an iconic park in San Diego. Why not activate that and actually uh, play sport in the park uh, in front of 
a lot of iconic museums, Freckles Organ Pavilion. So right now we're doing a, a pop-up uh, futsal game on Broadway Pier. Uh, it's in the middle of downtown. This is just usually an empty pier with nothing going on. Now it's being used for a soccer field. <laughs> soccer shouldn't be restrained to a court or some grass. Whatever can be played anywhere. I think that's the spirit of street soccer. Why not play soccer all over the city? So we're about to take on uh, San Diego Soccers. Carl made the probable mistake of inviting the San Diego Soccers and they took him up on his offers. I jokingly tweeted like, hey, let's play, and they accepted. So I was like, oh no. It's gonna be a very tough game, especially for a lot of us who are not professional soccer players. I think we're gonna get destroyed, but it's still gonna be fun. Like, that's what the point is, right? So if they make us look foolish, that's what they're supposed to do, they're pros. I'm thinking they're probably gonna beat us 15 nothing, but uh, who knows, maybe we'll get a goal in there. They sent the tweet out uh, calling me out with the soccers, and I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, soccer, I would love to play. Any chance to play, I'd love it. And, uh, you know, absolutely. I think Craig Elston, our, our PR guy, um, he, got a, he got wind of the, of the tweet, texted us right away. He's like, hey, we just got called out. We got to come out and represent the soccers. It's the summer. It's the right time. When, when you're called out, you try and respond. And I mean, the most honest answer is Craig and Boris could come. The organization asked us to do a lot of appearances. This one's soccer. I enjoy playing soccer. It's an easy one. I jumped on it when I had the opportunity to come out and play. So I actually, I heard about them through social media. Um, they were tagged in a post that I saw. I'm like, wait, Street Soccer San Diego? I checked their page out, and so I started looking at their Instagram, and they started liking a few things. I probably heard about them last year. I caught some stuff on Twitter online, and, and I knew that they had been out supporting some of our games, and, uh, you know, I thought it was cool. And honestly, I think this is what U.S. soccer needs. I think U.S. soccer lacks unorganized street soccer a little bit, and the rest of the country does, uh, the rest of the world does not. And so... You know, any, any opportunity to come out and support grassroots in the game in, in like a super organic fashion uh, is good. We have a lot of people that I haven't seen before, fresh faces here, so, and more people still showing up. Hey, I don't know, what time is it? We've been playing for about an hour. Uh, just going full speed, more and more people showing up. We got two teams waiting to come on while four teams play. Uh, Craig and Boris are being great. They're just killing it, staying on King's Court. Uh, I think we're realizing this disparity between professional athletes and hobbyists over the weekend. You know, we had a couple other guys that wanted to be here and th this and that happens, but for the two of them to kind of run the court for a good hour plus, uh, I think it's great for the, for the kids who come out and, and grown men, there's a, an incredible range of age and skill here at Bridge Barcata, and frankly, you know, you, you talk about Craig Childs, you talk about Boris Pardo, these are two first team all MASL players who have improved their game because of futsal. I don't think there's any argument that this game would benefit uh, youth players. It's gonna make you technically better, it's gonna help you with the ball at your feet. Um, and it's the reason Brazil and Argentina and Uruguay and a lot of the South American and Central American countries are having so much success. So. You know, it's fantastic for U.S. soccer, and I hope, you know, everyone gets behind these kind of games and gets out into their community and, uh, and participates in the local grassroots games. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it's fun. Good banter. It, it, like I said, you know, it brings the community together. It connects the people that are playing street soccer with guys that are professional, and we can come out and, and enjoy the game just as much as anyone else. It's not so much work. It's having a good time and, um, and getting a good workout in. No, had a good time, you know, enjoyed myself, great fitness game, great technical little game, and, and, and it's fun. It's a fun place to be, the energy is electric out here, and uh, everyone's playing hard. It's enjoyable. Um, I, I'm really surprised at the turnout, like this is like a hidden gem in San Diego. Um, I grew up playing this, futsal, street soccer in Queens and in New Jersey, and you know, it's king of the court, winter stays on, 
playing as long as you want, bring your friends, and it's all good vibes. I, the atmosphere, the, the environment, the, the, there's some good players too, and it's just all ages. You have some kids playing, so I mean, it's great. This is amazing for the community. I absolutely love this. I've been in social media contact with the Bridge Barcada guys for months, a couple years, but to see what they're doing and to see kind of our guys integrating and assimilating into the culture of the moment, it's incredible. It's great for our sport. It's great for the region. I just think it's really cool. Uh, well, I think we're about done. It's, I think amazing turnout. Some new players I haven't seen before. Some really good players. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better turnout. I mean, this is a great day. It's so much fun. Get the support of the soccer. Just get to talk to them a little bit. You know, hear their thoughts on like the culture of soccer in San Diego or across the U.S. I'm glad to have them come out. It kind of helps validate what we're doing as a group to show that we're here for the community and it's worth their time to come and join us. So I first heard about Bridge Barcada through some of the fans that I've met over the last couple of years since I moved to San Diego. Uh, we all got connected through the Soccer City effort, um, which didn't happen, and now we're reconnected through the USL San Diego effort. What these guys have done is truly amazing. Um, they an initially said we have this idea to go into Chicano Park, set up some uh, futsal type courts and let people play, and I said, good idea guys, no one's going to come. Look what happened. So they've, uh, they've done a remarkable job, and I think not only for the opportunity to come out on a Saturday morning in this case, get some exercise, have fun playing soccer. But you see people from all over San Diego here, as far as Alpine, far north as Vista, down to Chula Vista, San Ysidro, people from all walks of life are here in San Diego coming out and enjoying the beautiful game, which is awesome. Um, I had a lot of fun so far. It's harder than I thought, because these guys are out here playing all the time, so they understand the game a little bit better. I'm used to playing on grass. And so playing on a street court takes me back to my youth days when that's what we used to do, go play in the street because that's all we had. So it's fun, it's enjoyable, it's a little bit of a different game. Ball's a little heavier, but I'm getting used to it and it's a lot of fun. So if you think about players in my generation, I don't want to sound too old, but we didn't have structured regimented practices every day of the week the way kids do now. And I think we're losing something by not having more of this. I would literally go out and kick the ball against the curb a thousand times and work on trapping the ball and then work on passing it. And that's how I got better. When you have the opportunity to just come play with no pressure, your parents aren't around, you just have the opportunity to enjoy the sport for what it is, you have more fun, but it also makes you a better player, right? And so I think we could use more of this in our communities across America like they do across the world. Have more of this, it's gonna make us better. But then it's also um, bringing our community together in a way that I don't think any of us could have foreseen. So I give these guys a ton of credit at Bridge Barcada for doing what they're doing. I'm a big fan and I'll be back out for sure. I think, I mean, that's awesome. We have this whole process somehow documented because this, this happens, I'm sure, everywhere in the world. This is just kind of emphasizing that there are groups out there just like us that just get together anywhere and play. And it just shows that there's a community out there that's thirsty for playing the sport of, of soccer, futsal, football, whatever you want to call it. And I think this video uh, really will bring the community together because I think this this is something I can join, this is something I can get into, or this is something I can do on my own. And I can bring it to my own like city or my own uh, area. I don't necessarily have to go to Chicano Park or join these pop-ups. I could just get a group of friends and then start something on my own too. So I think, I think that kind of exposure in, this, in our story hopefully will inspire like, other people to do something similar that we're doing and that it doesn't cost money, it's free. Uh, so I think uh, hopefully it will inspire other people to do, do the same. One of our goals is to have uh, a full-on, full-time futsal court in San Diego County because we have 
zero. Um, and that's really the, the kind of the mission now is just to create a free-to-play space where futsal can happen 24-7 or just, you know, whenever people want. We'd love to have it here, but it really depends upon what the community wants in this place. Um, and we kind of, we, we don't want to intrude upon anybody else's um, use of this park. Us doing this shows that there is a need and a want, and that's why we have so many people come out. This is just going to grow as much as we want to grow. And we'll have special guests maybe appear, and we'll collaborate with different soccer communities and outreach within San Diego and uh, in the greater Southern California. So we're already reaching out to all different organizations and trying to do stuff together and really start something in San Diego. So it's like, it's our, it's our club. And it's really fun stuff. So, um, I gotta go play.